uh, the MP3 is, as I said, the third version of the distributed network protocol and internationally at LAN or, yeah, well, it is good. I mean, we'll see as we go along, but it's internationally accepted, um, except for all certain parts of Europe where there's some contention, as I said, between another and OEC standard. Um, there's a closely related um, standard also um, to the MP3, which is one of the um, IEEE standards that's um, actually governing the um, control to control communications protocol. This would be uh, between masters, for example, uh, between two SCADA high level control systems. So they talk or they can uh, rather use that standard than the MP3. So it is um, typically uh, for communications in SCADA systems, in supervisory control and data acquisition systems. Um, between masters, um, but especially between masters and um, uh, lesser devices. In other words, um, RTUs, um, IEDs, PLCs, um, distributed control systems, and things like that, where the master would typically be then um, a SCADA operator on talking main tube to the rest, basically controlling the rest. So that is where it's being used. It was uh, developed from uh, the electrical utility industry. But it's now that it's used uh, well um, in in heavy industries so like gas uh, and oil, um, renewable energy systems, um, uh, those kinds of things where there's a lot of noise, electromagnetically speaking, and um, also um, it's dirty, um, noisy. Uh, so the need for a very robust communications protocol um, arose, and that's why the electrical utility industry uh, basically developed. At the end, it was um, born out of necessity, I'd say, because of the, uh, and, and you'll see the, the way that it works, um, how incredibly robust it really is. I'm going to just show you quickly the, um, <coughs> the OSI, and then from that, we're going to uh, develop <coughs> or have a look at the DLP message structure. Um, so let me just grab the, you know the OSI pretty well, I'm just going to quickly do a screenshot for you. Um, <clears throat> and remember the OSI is not um, a protocol, it's a framework, um, but it's very extensive and very complete. So you can use then the um, OSI model, the similar model to develop uh, your own communications protocols. So. TCP, IP, um, uh, and some other communication protocols that actually um, like Canvas, and so they, they are developed uh, within the framework of OSI. So OSI stands for um, the, the um, Open Systems Interconnect model. We've got seven layers, so they stack one on top of the other. Um, first layer is right down there. Um, it's the physical layer and then we go up all the way until we see the application layer up there, and then the other five in between. Now, um, <coughs> application la layer is the most abstract one. This is the uh, where the, ac the actual uh, computer application or the control application uh, talks to the um, data, digital data that needs to be sent. And then, uh, as we'll see now in DMP3 specifically, there's headers being added. Um, to the using the left hand sides of the, um, the the messages as we go down to the uh, layer and it will downwards uh, into the more concrete world um, <coughs> and then we assemble basically a bit stream right there at the physical layer which is then uh, sent across the physical layer which is let's say for example RS4 is 5 and on the other side it's then basically uh, deconstructed into the data again. But let's move to specifics for DMP3. So this fit, fits now into the OSI model. Um, what we actually only, what we're using in DMP3 is layer 1, and layer 7, and then layer 2, which is the data link layer. So we'll just quickly scroll back. I'll show you that the uh, data link layer is number 2. So we use 1 and 2 and 7. So all the others uh, we don't use, but um, You'll notice that um, layer number four 
um, is used then to a lesser extent. So we're actually using some kind of an adaptation of the OSI model, although well, the OSI framework, although um, it, it, uh, what we developed in the MP3 is actually, it fits right in there. It's definitely covered by OSI. So what we've been, uh, what we're going to use extensively would be um, uh, data link and physical and application layers, and then um, let's say a scaled down or watered down version of the transport layer. Right. So now this is what we sit with. Um, I'm just going to say uh, four in brackets there for the uh, transport. You can see we call it a serial transport uh, layer because it's not the full implementation of the uh, transport layer as described or specified in the um, OS um, model framework. Anyway, so here we go. Then uh, in the description of a full uh, message of uh, the DND protocol. So we're going to go from the abstract um, data right on the top, and then we're going to uh, go downwards to the more concrete world of the actual physical bits that will be sent across the network. So what we're going to do is um, start with the data. So <clears throat> this comes from, let's say, an HMI user a machine or human machine interface. Let's say a touch screen panel um, in a SCADA control system. So now the uh, user touches a few things on the screen, or um, maybe he wants to switch on the valve or change the motor status. Um, so he presses a few buttons, and then the system reacts, and it needs to send some information or a message then to the plant. So let's say a PLC on the other side of the factory needs to react to this message. So the data would then be this, uh, let's say this gray out block. I'm going to highlight it in red. So that would be the data that's being generated by the user application. Then, um, so that sits on top of the layer, uh, on top of layer seven. It's actually outside the model, outside the OSI um, model framework. So then, what we set with here is ASDU, which is the application service data unit. Now, what you'll notice is that um, uh, a message then would would be a concatenation of several of these um, data units. So uh, uh, as you can imagine, just like humans, uh, computers will, will uh, speak in words and sentences and paragraphs. Uh, let's call it an analogy, but uh, something, something similar to that. So you'll see as we go downwards and uh, we, we go to the more concrete uh, bit world, uh, you will notice that perhaps you can compare this to the words, uh, words that we speak as humans, or maybe even letters and syllables. And as we move upwards, um, they become words, sentences, paragraphs, and perhaps even chapters of books. So the, the user application data uh, is right at the top uh, of the abstract um, world. Let's say it's a paragraph that needs to be sent. So what we're going to do, first of all, is uh, chop it into chunks. And these are these yellow blocks over there. The ASD use the application service data units. Okay, so many data units would then form uh, the uh, data. Um, the uh, ASDUs are then further uh, challenged by the protocol um, by adding headers. Now, this is a pattern that you will see throughout the development of a DNP message, that we take the, the layer uh, right above what, where we're working, and then we add a, layer, uh, um, a header to the left. And then we drop down to the next layer, and then we add another header. So at the end of the day, you will have a message that's much longer than what you actually require, the actual data. Um, so there's a lot of redundancy that you build into the, into the um, data that you're actually sending. But th there's very good reason for all of that, um, as we'll see in the, in the development of the protocol. So the first thing that we add then to the ASDU um, is the um, application protocol control information, which is just another name for um, let's say application header. Um, now this changes uh, an application service to an application protocol. So the moment you add a header, it changes the service to a protocol. So that's one pattern that you can uh, perhaps remember. Then you will see 
um, if you drop to the next layer, um, then this becomes a unit again. So then uh, you'll, you'll notice the application protocol data unit changes into a transport service data unit. So now um, the data that we have in that block with the header now becomes the data uh, without the header. But oh, you know the, the header is there, but the layer down downstream doesn't know or doesn't care about it. It just um, it's going to use that um, information and it adds it, it add its own um, headers uh, to to add its own uh, functionality. All right, so th that's one pattern that you'll see as we go downwards. Um, with this red arrow, you'll see we add headers all the way on the left. So we make the, the total data longer. Um, another pattern that you'll notice is that we actually starting to fragment. Um, so we chunk the data into into blocks. Uh, we chop it into blocks or um, or chunks of data. So um, immediately uh, in DNP, we we're going to specify the sizes of these actually. So um, and we're going to call them different names. So um, there are two names that are very important. The first is a fragment. The other name that's important is a frame. So those are important names to remember in DMP. A fragment has a size limit of 2048 bytes, and the frame has a size limit of 292 bytes. So we'll see why we have these strange numbers. Um, later, especially the one in the um, the, the uh, data link layer, it's got the strange uh, byte count. Um, all right, so at the moment we are now in the zero transport layer, where we have a, a, a fragment. So we have fragmented our main message, um, and we have the size limit of 2,048 bytes. So then we, um, if you want to go the other way around, you just Put them all together to get your data back. Um, okay, so now the application layer has added its own header there, so it changes it into an application protocol um, that you need. And then um, the, the header is a specific name, as I said before, the application um, protocol control information. So we'll study that right at the end of uh, this webinar. Um, we'll see how we were actually from the bottom upwards again um, in our reconstruction of the uh, specifics of DNP. But now, okay, so we drop down from um, application and then we in the transport layer. Now we're actually the zero transport layer. This is four in brackets. So this is the blue one, the transport um, service uh, data unit. Transport service data unit is then prepended with a transport header, which is th, and this changes the um, service into a protocol. So now we have a transport protocol data unit. But as I said, um, apart from just adding headers, we're actually further chopping it up into smaller chunks. So in other words, what we have done now is change the 2048 bytes into chunks of 250 bytes. Um, so in other words, uh, several of these chunks will fit into the TSDU. Now, these chunks themselves, they are the transport protocol data units. They then add their own header, as you can see. So, the, um, tra the transport header is actually just one byte, and there's 249 left for data. Um, and then we drop down again. We'll say we, we go to the L. The, uh, we use the L instead of the D um, to talk about the link, the data link layer. So we're focusing on the link layer. Um, so now we add the L edge, which is the link layer, to the left of the um, transport protocol data unit. <coughs> and then this gives us um, a link protocol data unit. Or PDU, and this is our lowermost um, data unit. And then from then on, we go to the physical layer where we change the bytes into bits that we're going to transmit physically over the whatever, maybe serial line, as we said. We see that the original specification of the EMP was over from RS232, which is a pretty old way and not <coughs> very uh, good in industrial environments. 485 is much better nowadays 
transition neural multi optical for the for the um, physical eye, which is right down there at the bottom. Um, right, so um, we've come a long way then in dropping up the data and also adding a lot of headers. Now, what we're going to do then in the rest of the webinar is actually study the contents of these headers um, to see what they're actually doing for us, what they use, are they useful or not, um, are they um, uh, useful in terms of um, especially redundancy and uh, robustness. Of messages, and you'll see that it is it's really a very good protocol in terms for uh, or for use in in highly um, polluted and very noisy industrial environments. Okay, so let's uh, start with our discussion on the um, with the data link layer, which is the one just above physical. We're not going to spend too much time on the physical layer. Um, it's just um, as I say, the physical. Um, hardware link. So, oh, by the way, um, where is the other uh, side? This, um, I'm just going to highlight you that one there, <coughs> is the only one that's hardware. Um, and let's highlight the rest in blue. From layers 2 to 7, all of that is in software. So, 